Hello everyone and welcome to this session about the MariaDB Server Roadmap. My name is Max Metter and uh, I'm from the MariaDB Corporation and I'll be talking a bit about uh, what we've done in the past versions of, of MariaDB Server and where we're going in the future. So let's start by uh, looking at the current state. So what we've done recently is that uh, we basically have a new version of MariaDB server every year. And uh, this is something we started a, a couple of years ago and which we've done now with, with uh, three, four different versions. And at the same time, we also moved uh, to a train model, which means that uh, the, the releases are time-based. So we have a fixed date for for feature freeze, uh, which means that we develop features onto this date, and after the feature freeze date, date, no more features are added to the new version. Then we just work on on stabilizing it and uh, and uh, basically making sure it uh, gets to GA quality. So that's what we've been doing in the past. Now there's pros and cons with with having a train model. Um, one of the best pros is that, well, you get the releases on time because you, you basically, that's basically what you go for. It's similar to what Ubuntu or, or some other OSs do. Uh, maybe the, the worst con is that, well, in some cases you have these great features, you really want the features to go in, but if they're not ready in time, well, they won't make it, they will go to the next release. However, by doing this on a yearly cadence, our thought was, well, it's not so bad if it misses, if, if a specific feature miss, misses one version, it will just go on to the next and it will be, uh, just be a one year delay in, in a sense. Uh, however, as we also move to, to yearly releases from, from what we had previously, where there would, could be, be almost two years or even more between releases, it also means that we have less features per release. Uh, so now we have, uh, new versions uh, on a very clear schedule however and they come out pretty rapidly however because they are every year there's not so many uh, features per version so that's also something we now started looking at is this really the best way forward so we've done it for a couple of years and it's time now to evaluate so that's something we're also going to be looking at going forward so I'm going to talk a bit about that as well uh, what the options are, if there are any options, but for the time being, this is the process. Uh, and I'm going to look at here some of the past versions that have largely followed this uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, cadence of a yearly yearly release. The first one where we officially did this was was 10.4, but 10.3 was almost a year after 10.2 already. Uh, so what have we been working on in in these previous versions? And by the way, here I say community server because we we have something called enterprise servers, and I just want to want to be clear: that this is about the community server, which is the one you see. Enterprise is something that that is only specific to customers. Just to be clear here that we're talking about the community server. All right, so let, let let's look. Uh, what we've done in the past. So let's start with uh, 10.2. So this is this came out quite a while ago already. Uh, uh, what we had been working on, or one of our goals back then, was to to in a sense increase uh, increase uh, the features available in in, in MariaDB, make MariaDB more. Uh, uh, complete when it comes to, to standard features. So we've added things like window functions, CTEs, and other compatib comp compatibility enhancements in 10.2. So some of the really cool features in 10.2 are, are listed here, like window functions, CTEs, add SQL layer, and some others like multi-trigger support and things like that. Uh, we also added the, the uh, Myrox engine, which which also added kind of the 
the, the use cases you could uh, use MariaDB in. Then 10.3, uh, the big push for 10.3 was really, again, compatibility, but in this case specific, we added uh, an Oracle uh, PLC SQL compatibility parser, parser, which basically allowed you to, to uh, run your PLC SQL directly in, in MariaDB. So if you had, uh, if you came from an Oracle database and you had a lot, a huge library of PL SQL, you could basically just run those by changing, setting a SQL mode, you could just run them in MariaDB. And that was a huge feature, well, if you came from Oracle. But we also added other uh, cool features like system versioning, uh, which is my one of my favorites for 10.3, where basically with system versioning, uh, you basically set uh, for specific, for this is a per table setting, you can basically set system versioning on a table and this means that for this table, uh, when, when you change a row in this table, you actually don't change it, but you keep a copy of, of the change, of the previous state of the row. So you can always, from a table, you can go back in time and look at the state of a table a month ago, a week ago, a year ago, whatever. This is extremely useful for uh, auditing purposes and, and could also be used for some application application logic, but mainly for on a system level for auditing and, and other things. Uh, so that was a really cool feature added in, in 10.3 and, and it's part of the ANSI standard, but so one more thing we added. And also the Spider engine became fully supported in 10.3. So we added another, another engine. And we did our first uh, uh, instant alter operation for, for, this is specific for InnoDB. So in InnoDB, there's the option to, to do some alter table operations instantly, uh, which basically means that you do an alter table and it doesn't actually do anything. It just changes the structure of the table. And then the operation or whatever it means for the, for the data is, is done afterwards. Uh, in this case, it was an uh, add column. You could add a column to the table, uh, which basically means that in the InnoDB table, the new column would just not have anything. And then every time you do an update or something on a row, then you will actually get data for this column. And this was expanded uh, in the version after that. So in 10.4, we added more instant alter table operations. Some cool optimi optimizations like optimized trace. And we also started with the next step of, of kind of temporal tables. We added application uh, time period tables. So this is not system versioning, but this allows instead the application to define a time period. Uh, this is very useful for anything like contracts or subscriptions uh, where you can have, have constraints like that they can't overlap or, or, or things like that. There can't be holes or something like that. Uh, and then 10.5 that came out uh, in June, we added even more cool features. So, for example, there were some missing features for, for the application time I just talked about. We added a nice security feature where the super privilege was split up into smaller to allow more fine-grained tuning of, of privileges. We added lots of JSON, JSON features, but perhaps the coolest feature of 10.5 was that we added Column Store, which is a storage engine that allows, allows you to do uh, analytics by storing all the data in columnar fashion, it allows you to do really, really fast analytics. And we also added the S3 engine at the same time. So that's kind of the, I think column store was the biggest feature of 10.5. And that's where we're right now. Uh, so that was just a brief overview of the past versions. And now let's look at kind of where we're heading. So. I just quickly want to talk about what's our product vision. So a couple of years ago at MariaDB Corporation, we sat down and said, hey, we need to figure, we need to have a vision. Where do we want to take our products? And obviously we do have some other products. Uh, the server is not the only product, but the server is by far our largest and most important product, the one where we spend the most, most time and effort on. Uh, but this is not server exclusive to the server, this, this vision. So we decided, okay, what are the most important things we want with our products going forward? 
And the number one thing we came up with was adaptive scale. Uh, we want the product to be something that adapts to your growing need. Uh, you might be a mom and pop shop uh, where you have one database, a small website, you sell something, and a small all you need is a small web-based database that can store your, your web shop and all of the transactions. But then as your customer base grows, you get more products to sell perhaps, you get more customers, more transactions, you want to start doing analytics. Well, we want you to be able to do analytics using MariaDB. You shouldn't have to use another database to do analytics with some kind of complicated transformation of moving data from one database to the other and then a different language to analyze the data. We don't want you to, you to use graph databases for specific things. We don't want you to have to go to, to uh, NoSQL for some things. We basically want to be able to adapt with your needs. As you grow, whether you need scale out, analytics, whatever you want to need, uh, whenever you might need, we want you to be able to just use MariaDB and then uh, there might be changes behind the scenes, like you might have to change the storage engine or, or do something else, but for the application, the front end, the user, it should be MariaDB. No complicated transformations, no complicated new languages to learn. It should all be done from the same language. That was basically our goal. Go from, be able to go from a really small database up to basically planet scale, like petabytes and planet scale and scale out and everything, just using the same, same database. That's our goal. We also want the database to be more autonomous. Uh, like there's almost 700 variables in MariaDB. Who knows how to tune all of them optimally? Not, not many, right? So we want uh, the database itself to be able to make smarter, better defaults and, and in some cases even do, do these options by itself. Now, it's going to take a long time before we get to some kind of automatic tuning by a database, but we take, we want to, that's our end goal, right? So we're taking steps in that direction. We're, we're uh, simplifying buffers and variables, making things tunable uh, without restarts and, and things like that. So making, we're taking steps in the way of getting to a place where the database in theory could be autonomous, just run uh, by itself. But that's an end goal, right? So we're not nowhere near there. And at the same time, we, we, we had cloud native as the third pillar where we, we do realize that, that the market is shifting more and more towards cloud computing. So luckily enough, MariaDB is, is well suited for the cloud. It works really well just by not having done anything right, but we want to be aware of this and want to focus on this and ensure that as, uh, market shifts more to the cloud, MariaDB is adapted to that as well, so that you can have it both on the cloud and on-prem, right? We don't want to focus only on the cloud either, uh, but MariaDB should be a hybrid that you can easily move from one unit to the other. So that was our goal, uh, but that's the vision we came up with a couple of years ago. Some of this <clears throat> you can already see in, in the past versions because we actually came up with this around the 10.3 timeframe. So uh, we started incorporating this in our, in our product management process. And when we evaluate features and look at the features we want, we look at this is our, our goal for our product. This is where we want to take our products. So <clears throat> we try to focus on, on features and things that help us achieve these goals. That's basically the idea with, with having this vision. So now let's look a bit at what's coming in the future going forward. I already said that we are evaluating whether this yearly cadence of, of having having a new version, a new series of the server every year with a feature freeze date, whether that's really the best way going forward. Uh, we, we've noticed that some, some, some customers and, and users, it's upgrading is, is a complicated process and, and doing it every year is just maybe too much. So we're looking at different ways of, of getting there, but, but that doesn't affect uh, uh, where we want to take our product that just affects how how it's delivered so so that's one one choice that's why I'm not giving gonna give you a, a roadmap for specific versions we already have 10.6 is, is fairly well planned out and we know fairly well what's what's going to be in 10.6 or what could be in 10.6 uh, but I wanted to, to basically address where we're going on a more broader scale 
So <laughs> first of all, as I said, the most important uh, uh, pillar is adaptive scales. Mm. Or adaptive scale, being able to to adapt to different workloads, to different usages and, and different usage scenarios. So here we've already done a lot recently. We added My the Myrox storage engine. Uh, we added Spider, and now in 10.5 we've added Columnstore, right, for analytics. Uh, in the enterprise version, we also added Expand for for scale out, but that's that's currently not not part of the community server, and we're looking at whether what we can do there. Uh, but that's definitely something that we're looking at. Okay, better integration of storage engine, not only just adding a storage engine, but making sure they work well. Uh, for distributed engines, what about system tables? Should they be distributed with the engine so that if one fails, the other fails, and so forth? Things like that. Uh, we want to make sure that features are aligned across storage engines. Uh, we don't want features to be in the storage engine so much, or, or not features that shouldn't be in the storage engine. Obviously, things like storage and stuff like that should be storage engine dependent. But for example, right now, backup there is no unified backup. It's each storage engine has their own method. So getting a consistent backup across engines is not really possible. So that's something we want to do. Well, we want to have an API so that you can take backups synchronized across engines. Then maybe one engine isn't able to do uh, an online backup. Others are. So there might be some, some issues there, but at least there should be the possibility to have a synchronous backup across engines and so forth. Like there are some features that are now engine dependent that shouldn't be like foreign keys. Only InnoDB and Expand support foreign keys, but should foreign keys really be in the engine? And so forth. Partitioning is another thing. We're looking at partitioning. It's fairly old, the, the current partitioning feature. We want to expand it, make it more usable, usable and make it more adaptable. Like it should, it would be really cool to have to be able to have different engines on different partitions. So for example, for analytics, you can have uh, parts parts of your table using an OLTP engine like InnoDB and parts of your table using an analytics engine like Columnstar. So you can basically just move partitions as, you, as data becomes old and you just need it for analytics purposes, you can just move it to an analytics engine without changing the table and stuff like that. So we're looking at, at being able to, to basically grow or or, or mod change with the, your, your changing needs. So that's one thing that we're working working on. And some of this stuff will come in 10.6 and some of it will be later. Uh, regarding autonomous, we're working not really on making the database autonomous because that's a, a bit far for, for now, but we're working on making operations non-blocking, like non-locking alter table. That's That's something that's been out there through tools in, for quite a while, but it should really be a server feature. So that's something we're working on that should be coming very soon to, to MariaDB. Uh, also for, for replication, currently when you do an alter table, if it's slow, the alter table is done first on the, on the primary node, and then after that it starts on the replica. So there might be a huge lag. If you have a long alter table, it will be a huge lag. So doing something with that, making sure that the lag is smaller is something we're working on. But also just buffers, buffers should be dynamically tunable. And in some cases, they should be completely dynamic. In many cases, the server should know better how to tune itself than you. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't have the option to tune, tune the server. But for many of these variables, uh, it's really hard as a user to figure out how to tune them optimally. Ideally, you should just let the server choose what based on the current workload what makes most sense like like some of the uh, in 10.5 we really did a lot of the InnoDB in, internals and one of the thing things we really allowed there is uh, the thread tuning to be done more by the server and not so much forced by the user we don't want to force you to have to make choices of things you don't really have any idea what, what makes sense right so it's better if the server does choices in many cases. In the cases you have a strong opinion on choices, of course you should be able to set them, but the defaults as far as possible should be that the server does the choices for you. So, and of course the end goal is that you just install your database and 
it just grows according to with some 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 limitations and then it just adapts to your needs but that's still a far <laughs> a far a bit uh, of a stretch for now for cloud native uh, we don't have a whole lot that we're really working on yet uh, as you might know MariaDB has a product called SkySQL which is basically a, a about running MariaDB in the cloud so we're getting a lot of experience from that and that will basically lead us to do more things. Right now, we're just focusing on making sure MariaDB works on cloud platforms in containers environment and, and uh, like DevOps environment with containerization and, and, and stuff like that. But we think that from the Sky SQL experience, we'll, we'll get much more things to, to add that will help MariaDB for everyone run better on a cloud platform. All right, that was uh, shorter than I thought, but that's basically it. So, so thanks for this and uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>